everyone, I'm Lori Miller. This is Plan Free, and today I'm going to show you the little fishing village of Boca de Tomatlan, just south of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Hello, everyone. Just coming to you here from Boca de Tomatlan. You can see there. It's about 11 miles south of Puerto Vallarta and you arrive on these buses here. So that's one of the ways to get here. You can also get here via taxi or Uber. Uh, we arrived about a week ago uh, via Uber and then we've discovered that Uber comes one way, but if I try to get an Uber back, there's no Uber back. So this is how you get back to Puerto Vallarta from Boca. You take the bus back. So I just wanted to walk you around this cute little town. We've been staying here for just over a week now. This is the main highway here. We actually come up to this highway and we found a couple places to eat and buy a few groceries along there and along here. It's a very happening town. There's always something going on. There's pretty much like one little grocery store, one little bakery, and it's just the cutest little town ever. Typical small town Mexican village, and I just thought you might like to see some of the friends we meet. Hey, buddy. Hey. Hey. Here's another bus. The buses come pretty often. We were told they come about once every 30 minutes, so. So here's what the little town looks like if you descend on the regular little walkway, roadway. You can buy, right there, they're selling elotes, which is like a corn on the cob on a stick. A little further down, there's a bait and tackle shop, which we've never found open yet in the whole week we've been here. Next door, there's a bakery. They're obviously closed also. We'll make it to what they call the Malacan. And the Malacan is like their main um, touristy spot. All the boats would come pick you up. You can buy some food. It's a little more touristy in Boca de Tomatlan than we would have thought. We were literally thinking quiet fishing village. But almost every night, it's a party down at the Malacan, so heads up. In fact, yesterday was um, June the 1st, and unbeknownst to us, they started their music at about noon, and it went all day till about 7 a.m. the next morning. It was Dia de Marinero, or Day of the Mariner. And the sentiment is nice, you know, they want to honor the fallen fishermen. Continuing on our little walk, the highway is directly up this tall road behind me and so we're just basically walking right down to the water. Down here you can see they're, they've got a fire going. They roast fish and shrimp every night and you can buy a nice meal for maybe 10 Canadian dollars. It was very tasty. Here's the menu. These flags are still overhead from yesterday's big celebrations. But this is the essence of Boca right here. These boats were decorated for the big party yesterday, Day of the Mariner, and they made a tribute to the fallen um, fishermen. And so they throw flowers into the water and make an offering. So there's the beautiful ocean right there. And it's very cute right now. The river, the river flows down from up in the Sierra Madres and flows all the way down here. This river is called Rio Orcones and it's very, very cute. There's tiny fish in there. And we actually, I'm gonna take you up ahead there where we walk along the Malacan. Mini Super Alondra. We almost rented the place above there, but decided that uh, to stay right here on the Malacan might not be the most peaceful location. So we chose something a little more up river where it's a little quieter. So I'll go show you that. Just to show you too, just all along both banks of the river are people's houses, rental units. We were actually told here that it's quite difficult to get a local apartment for a local's price point, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 pesos because Boca de Tomatlan is so touristy kind of, the locals and foreigners alike. <laughs> Buenas tardes. 
the locals and foreigners alike come and they, they spend one night, two nights, a weekend, and it's really, really hard to get anything other than a nightly raid around here. There's one laundromat here, as you can see. We're getting to where we're gonna cross the river. Just further up ahead there, you can't quite see it, but there's a suspension bridge over the river. But this is where, this is where we were told to cross. And straight ahead is the actual, one of, one of those six apartments is the one we rented. This little watering hole, every day, moms, dads, kids come and cool off. And they jump in and they swim around, it's very cute. And then we rent right there behind us. And so uh, the only challenge was getting our luggage across this thing. Hopefully it doesn't rain tomorrow when we leave. And that's where the river Rio, Rio Horcones dumps into the ocean. So we'll walk a little bit up river there and I'll show you around what that looks like. Cause it's, um, it's pretty charming and most days other than boat motors revving, generators going, roosters crowing, dogs barking and music blaring, it's a really peaceful spot. <laughs> So there's a couple of paths, one here and one there, that you can walk all the way down to the ocean, which I'll show you in a little bit. And then there's this way where we're going today. So up in front of me where we're going up river, it's really, really local. So here behind me, you can see this suspension bridge that was um, erected. I don't know when it was, but it's the main way to get across the river. There's a tree up ahead I'm gonna show you. When I met the expat who's been here for 10 years, she told me that just this past August of 2021, a big, um, a big hurricane, she said, came through the area. I believe it was a hurricane. And it knocked over this enormous tree. I don't know, I hope you can see that. It's absolutely enormous. I'll show you the root end of it. She said the water in the river here, as you can see, it's just a beautiful trickle. We are just before rainy season, so the rain hasn't come down yet. But the river overflowed this first bank and it overflowed the wall into her yard there. So that's pretty intense. But look at this guy. Yikes! So I'll show you that awesome swimming hole right over there. And you're really gonna love the river because um, Further up the path and further away from the ocean, there's all kinds of hikes that you can do back up into the hills. And then I'll show you even down this path when you go towards the beach, there's another hike that you can go around the rocks and end up on some more private beaches too. Little chickens and little chicks running amongst the beer cans. Very cute. And there's usually a million of them, but today I'm only finding one. grow to very, very big, about this, bigger than the size of the palm of my hand. Some sweets you can rent. A little on the pricey side. Even if you stay long term, the prices were higher than we expected they would be in such an out of the way location. Bring your thousands, I would say, for pretty much all of these. Very, very beautiful though. Almost like anywhere, the nicer spots are expat owned and the prices do reflect that. It's a little bit treacherous going here. So I'm gonna take you to the ocean now and it's where you can take some water taxis. Um, further south, passport, uh, further south past Boca or north towards Puerto Vallarta and the water taxi you can even get to Yalapa I think it's 120 or 150 pesos per per rider to Yalapa and Yalapa is a really small uh, oceanfront <laughs> very small 
community accessible only via boat. So you kind of have to get here to Boca or Puerto Vallarta and then get to Yalapa. Anyway, this is the route to the beach. It makes you wonder if you're really supposed to be walking it because it's literally through someone's backyard. I've been through here when people are bathing, swinging on this swing. Um, it's their front door, it's their back door, it's their kitchen area. It's very unusual. The river is still flowing here. And you see the sign up there, Colomitos. This is the path you would take to hike to Colomitos, which is one of the first small, more secluded beaches. <laughs> We've heard stories that you can get to Colomitos Beach and you have it all to yourself for like two hours and all of a sudden a boat tour comes in and 30 people are dropped off. Nothing's all that undiscovered anymore, is it? So you see what I mean? This is the path, this is the hiking path. This store was open yesterday, not today. This is someone's house drainage, right over top of the path, <laughs> right into the river, right into the ocean. Some of that was a little bit shocking to us at first, but wait till you see that ocean. This is how you, up ahead there, you can see how the locals bring in their boats if they had a tour or if they were out fishing. You can see how they they literally pull it in the river canal by hand and then they snake it along and if the water's high enough they can bring it right into here to the holding to the holding bay of the river. Pretty wild. Let's go. All right, we made it to the mouth of the river. Here's what it looks like. Can you see that? It's beautiful. I mean, this is probably one of the most picturesque but once you get to the mouth of the river and at the ocean, I mean, what's not to love? People all over the world love the ocean and here's why. It's absolutely beautiful. A mini beach and the river that flows into it. Well, everyone, that's Boca de Tomatlan. I hope you enjoyed this little walkabout with me. <laughs> um, I mean, I just walked the whole town, most of the streets, both sides of the river in, um, I don't know, under an hour. Wanted to show you how cute it was, how cute it is. Come and stay, this is what you're missing. This is Plan Free, I'm Lori Miller. Aaron, I welcome you if you're new to our channel. And if you're a returning guest, we thank you so much for watching, you guys. Please do all the things that YouTube likes. Click the like button, share the video with someone you know. Please subscribe if you like our content. And we thank you so much for watching.